squash squash and squash once again what's up 23 percent nation it's your man coach d ladies and gentlemen today we're talking about squash yes but it's a different type of squash so say hello to the butternut squash so welcome to fruit of the day the one and only butternut squash all right first up just a little bit of background information yes butternut squash is a fruit why because it has seeds so if you ever come across any plant food and you are unsure as to whether or not it's a fruit or a vegetable it's easy if if it has seeds as well as an edible portion then it is definitely a fruit also the butternut squash is part of the cucurbita family of fruits specifically known as one of the six varieties of cucurbita moscata interesting also in parts of the world like new zealand and australia it's more commonly referred to as butternut pumpkin or grandma <laughs> so there we have it guys a few little pieces of background information about the one and only butternut squash all right now it's time for a few fun facts although it's now a well-known fruit butternut squash has only been around since the 1940s the earliest documented butternut squash originated in waltham massachusetts and was purportedly developed by charles a leggett an insurance agent who fell into farming when his doctor insisted he spend more time outdoors interesting according to his wife dorothy leggett began farming corn but found it difficult and less financially substantial in the already saturated market eventually he began farming squash charles found the gooseneck squash and hubbard squash to combine to make a more conveniently shaped and sized squash when asked what he wanted to call it leggett said it was smooth as butter and sweet as a nut leading to its new title as the butternut squash so there we have it guys the original story of how the butternut butternut squash became to be now take a look at the picture because i know that you've probably seen this fruit inside of your local grocery store but you didn't quite know what to do with it well it's a two-step process right step number one slice it down the middle step number two empty out the seeds yes it's just that simple so there we have it guys a few fun facts about the one and only butternut squash all right now it's time for the not so fun facts as with any food product butternut squash is known to occasionally cause an allergic reaction the reactions are generally minimal and limited to contact dermatitis and mild swelling around the hands or mouth so take a look at the picture ladies and gentlemen if your fingers ever resemble this picture after handling butternut squash then chances are you are suffering from an allergic reaction or if there's any type of uh, swelling or maybe even itching right so here's what i say rather than take some type of over-the-counter medication to combat the allergic reaction symptoms simply don't eat it <laughs> right yes unfortunately butternut squash does well fortunately it does offer many nutrients but unfortunately you have an allergic reaction so do yourself some good stay away from it and pick another type of squash or another type of fruit to ingest it's just that simple so there we have it guys the not so fun facts about the one and only butternut squash all right now it's time to talk about the 520 rule ladies and gentlemen the 520 rule is really all about food labels basically it helps us to understand and read food labels ultimately it's a guide it's a guide that lets us know whether or not a food or beverage item is a good source or not a good source of any particular nutrient now when we talk about the 520 rule ultimately we're talking about percent daily value abbreviated percent dv 
Now let's take a look at our sample food label. As you can see, it is colored in different colors. Now, the first color that I want to address is the purple color, which is basically the percent daily value column. Now, as you can see, percent daily value is represented as a percentage, right? Some are as low as 0%, some may be high as 100%. Now, let's talk about the yellow portion. Guys, the nutrients that are highlighted in yellow unfortunately do a really good job at promoting illness, sickness, and disease within the body temple. So when it comes to saturated fat, trans fat, cholesterol, and sodium, you definitely want to make sure that those percent DVs are as close to 0% as possible. Next up, let's take a look at the light blue nutrients, such as dietary fiber, vitamin A, vitamin C, calcium, and iron, which basically represent all vitamins and minerals. Now, unlike the yellow nutrients, the blue nutrients do an amazing job at promoting wellness and health within the body temple. So when it comes to percent DV, you definitely want those percentages to be as close to 100% as possible. Now, today I want to offer you just a little more specific information when we talk about the 520 rule. So here we go. So if a food or beverage item offers 0% to 9% DV of any particular nutrient, then unfortunately that food or beverage item is considered not a good source of that particular nutrient. Next, if the food or beverage item offers 10% to 19% DV of any particular nutrient, then that food or beverage item is considered a good source of that particular nutrient. Lastly, if the food or beverage item offers 20% DV or greater, then that food or beverage item is considered an excellent source of that particular nutrient. So there we have it, guys. The ins and outs about the 520 rule. All right, now let's dive into the nutrition facts, shall we? So for today's lecture, we're going to simply say that one serving of butternut squash is equal to about seven eighths of a cup. Now, for those of us who don't know that much about math, it's okay. Just understand this. When we talk about seven eighths cup, basically we're talking about almost a cup. Now, it's a little more than three fourths of a cup, but just a little less than a full cup, right? So here we go. One serving of butternut squash is going to provide the body with only 82 calories, 21.5 grams of carbohydrates. Look at this, 1.8 grams of protein. And you didn't think fruit had protein. Well, there you go. Only 0.2 grams of fat. Now check this out. One serving of butternut squash is going to provide you with vitamin A. But look at the percent DV. 457% DV. Amazing. So what does that mean? Here's what it means. It means that eating one serving of butternut squash is basically going <laughs> to supply you with all the vitamin A you need for more than four days, almost five days. Amazing, right? Next up is vitamin C coming in at 52% DV. So that's an excellent source. Next up is manganese coming in at 18% DV. Good source. Then we have potassium coming in at 17% DV. Good source. How about magnesium coming in at 15% DV? Good source. Vitamin E, 13% DV. Good source. Vitamin B6 coming in at 13% DV. Good source. How about thiamine coming in at 10% DV? Good source. Niacin and folate each come in at 10% DV, both good sources. Then we have calcium coming in at only 8% DV, not a good source. Lastly, well, almost lastly, <laughs> is iron and copper, each coming in at only 7% DV, not a good source. And lastly is phosphorus coming in at only 6% DV, not a good source. So there we have it, guys. The nutrition facts about the one and only butternut squash. All right, now it's time to talk about the health benefits. But before we do, Coach D wants to offer you just a little wisdom. 
Guys, it's time to talk about the principle of cause and effect. Now, some of us may already be familiar with this principle. Why? Because it's one of the seven hermetic principles. And basically, it states that every cause has its effect and every effect has its cause. There really is no such thing as chance and or luck. In other words, everything happens for a reason, right? So what does that all mean? Well, here's what it means. It means that the nutrition facts that we just went over are the causes, whereas the health benefits are the effects. So if you want to experience any of these health benefits, you must cause them. Now, believe it or not, it's the same thing with disease, sickness and illness. If you want to be sick, you want to be ill, you want to develop some type of disease, well, you're going to cause that too. But rather than focus on sickness, illness, and disease, let's talk about health. Let's talk about wellness. So here's what happens to the human body once you decide to eat more butternut squash. Number one, butternut squash is high in antioxidants. Now the question is, which antioxidants and what do antioxidants do? Well, in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen, anti -ant antioxidants basically deactivate free radicals, right? Which, believe it or not, is very beneficial for the human body. It prevents aging, it's, it, it could help prevent cancer, heart disease, and also any type of inflammation that may be going on inside the body. Now the question is, which anti -anti antioxidants, <laughs> excuse me, are found in butternut squash? Well, say hello to beta carotene, alpha carotene, beta cryptoxanthin, and manganese. Secondly, butternut squash boosts our immune system. Bones healthy. Very, very interesting. Well, say hello to potassium and manganese. Next up, Butternut squash improves our physical performance and reduces fatigue. Well, what's responsible for that? Vitamin C. Also, uh, a butternut squash aids in weight loss. That's right. So if anybody out there is interested in dropping a few pounds, it's easy. Eat more butternut squash. Now, it's low in calories, right? And it's a good source of manganese and potassium. And lastly, butternut squash reduces symptoms of PMS. So ladies, this is definitely for you. So the question is, which nutrients help to contribute <laughs> to this wonderful thing? Well, say hello to manganese, potassium, vitamin K, and good old vitamin E. So there we have it, guys. Lots and lots and lots of health benefits from butternut squash. All right, it's time to talk about food. Yes, plant food. So say hello to ForksOverKnives.com. It's our go-to website for everything vegan. So as usual, I went to the website, ForksOverKnives.com, did just a little bit of research, and look at what I found. Two amazing vegan butternut squash recipes that I want to share with you right now. So the first one is butternut squash lasagna roll-ups take a look at the picture looks amazing the second recipe that i want to share with you today is quinoa with kale and roasted butternut squash take a look at that picture looks delicious doesn't it now here's the thing if your mouth is watering then please click on the description box right why because i'm providing you with a direct link to each recipe now once you get to ForksOverKnives.com, you're going to find a lot of great information. It's going to give you the cooking time. It's going to give you the ingredient list and it's going to give you the cooking instructions. So please do me a favor, make it, taste it, come back to the video and share your thoughts. So there we have it, guys. Not one, but two amazing vegan butternut squash recipes from ForksOverKnives.com. All right, 23% Nation, I hear you. A lot of you say, well, Coach D, thanks for the recipes. Coach D, 
Thanks for the fun facts and the not so fun facts. But what I really want to know is when should I eat more butternut squash? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if that's your question, then the perfect day, and I do mean the perfect day to eat more butternut squash is nature day. What? Nature day? Yes. Good old nature day. Nature Day happens to be the first day of the 23% challenge. Now, some of us may not know what the challenge is all about. Well, if that's you, listen up. The 23% challenge is basically a, a monthly seven day wellness program that is designed to help improve your health, your wealth, your relationships, and it also helps to save good old planet Earth. Now, here's the thing about the challenge is that it is the first seven days of every single month. The first all the way through the seventh. Now, being that Nature Day is the first day of the challenge, that simply means that Nature Day is the first day of every single month. So whether it's May 1st, October 1st, or even January 1st, it's always Nature Day. All right, so maybe you're intrigued. Maybe you want to learn more about Nature Day. Maybe you're the type of person who is considering transitioning to a more whole food plant-based diet. Maybe you're the type of person that's suffering from the big four, meaning heart disease, obesity, cancer, and type two diabetes. Or maybe you have skin issues. Maybe you have some digestive issues. Or maybe you have some type of autoimmune issue, right? Well, if that's you, then Coach D wants to offer four options that can help make that transition a little easier. First, I'd like to introduce you to a 3% vegan. Now, what is that? Well, it's any person, man, woman, or child, who only eats plant foods and drinks only water only one day out of an entire month. Now, to help you out, that one day could be the first day, which is Nature Day. The second option is try to become a 10% vegan. Now, what is a 10% vegan? It's easy. It's any person, man, woman, or child, who decides to eat only plant foods and drinks only water only three days out of an entire month. Now, I'll let you decide which three days it's going to be. F option number three is to try to become a 17% vegan. What does that mean? Well, it translates to you eating only plant foods and drinking only water only five days out of an entire month. Now, which five days? Again, I'll let you decide, but it'll probably be best if it's the first five days of the month. And lastly is a 23% vegan. Now, technically, that's what Coach D considers himself to be, right? So now what does that mean? It simply means that I only eat from the five food groups of plant foods. So what are the five food groups of plant foods you may be wondering? Well, it's fruits vegetables and herbs, nuts and seeds, legumes, meaning beans and peas, and of course, whole grains. And the only beverage that I consume is good old water. So there we have it, guys, the ins and outs about Nature Day. All right, so maybe you're inspired. Maybe you're motivated to tackle Nature Day, right? Well, if that's you, I want to offer you a few tips. Why? Because I want your nature day to be successful, whether it lasts for one day or seven days. Tip number one, go to your local grocery store. Now, this trip is going to be like none other. Why? Because you're basically going to go to two places. Number one is the produce section and number two is the freezer aisle. Why the produce section? Well, that's where all of your fresh plant foods are located. Why the freezer aisle? Well, that's where all of your frozen plant foods are located. Now, some people may be wondering, what's better, fresh or frozen? Well, believe it or not, the nutrition content of each option is pretty comparable. So if you find yourself not being able to eat all of your fresh plant foods that you purchased from the produce section in a timely manner, then you may want to opt for the frozen options. It's simple. They last longer. <laughs> OK, tip number two is to go visit your local farmer's market. Now, this is for those of us who must and I repeat must have organic plant foods only. Right. So if that's you, then please visit your local farmer's market. Now, here's the great thing about farmer's markets is that they 
only cater to the organic plant food market. Nice. Tip number three, go visit the prepared dishes section of your local grocery store. So after you're done with the produce section and the freezer aisle, walk on over to the prepared dishes section. Now, depending on your grocery store, they may call it the kitchen or the prepared dishes section, doesn't really matter. But once you get over there, talk to the person behind the counter and ask them if they have any vegan options, not vegetarian options. But trust me, there is a difference. Now, ask for a sample and providing you like it, purchase your food either by the pound or two pounds if you really, really like it. Tip number four, it's time for us to support the vegan community. So ladies and gentlemen, go visit your local vegan restaurant. That's right. Now here's the one major advantage to eating at a vegan restaurant is that they hire vegan chefs who know much more about plant foods than you do, right? So here's the thing. They not only know more about plant foods, but they know how to cook plant foods so that they retain the majority of their nutrients. They also know which plant foods to combine together to give us the most nutritious, delicious dishes. And my last tip is to contact a vegan meal prep company. Now, this is for those of us who really prefer someone else do all the cooking for us. We just want to eat. Now, here's the major advantage about these vegan meal prep companies is that they make it, they deliver it, you eat it. It's just that simple. So there we have it, guys. Five tips to help make your nature day successful. All right. 23% Nation, it's time for our question of the day. Now, today's question is true or false. So here's the statement. Butternut squash is a vegetable. Now, I believe I covered that earlier in the video. So if you didn't hear it or if you missed it, simply rewind. And don't forget to write your answer in the comment box below. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching. I definitely want to thank you for listening. As always, let's eat well, feel well. Think well, do well, be well. This is your man, Coach D. Now, before I sign out, I got to ask you to please like, share, and subscribe to the channel, especially if you love butternut squash. Also, don't forget to use our three-word mantra. It's hashtag eat more plants. As stated earlier, my name is Coach D. I'm signing out, but always remember to take care God bless and never, ever forget that Coach D loves you.